born in Bogota, Colombia in 1963, but now lives in Sydney, Australia. So that is kind of a first for us to have someone from South America who now lives halfway around the world. And I think when you look at her work, you're gonna understand why she's chosen Australia as her place to live. Her work um, involves actually using natural materials. I'm not sure where she gets her materials from, which is a big question mark in my head as an artist slash environmentalist. It does kind of concern me where she gets all the materials that she uses. And she also uses what she calls ready-made materials, but I call trash. Um, she uses plastic, garbage, plants, dried and living animals, bones, and styrofoam. She got her education at the University of Sydney, Yale, and the Universidad de los Andes, which I'm assuming is in Colombia. All right. We're going to start, as always, with a slideshow of her work, talk briefly about it, and then I have a project for us. Any questions before I begin the slideshow? No? All right. I think I have it open. Let's just jump right in. Let me get rid of this. Move this up. We're going to play. And here we go. Folks at home, if someone could give me a thumbs up that you can see our slideshow. Thank you, Susan. All good. What? All good. Colombian is misspelled. Oh, forgive me. I'm so sorry. No, I made the slideshow. <laughs> yeah, I blew it. You are absolutely correct. Um, and Laura, can you min minimize the... Colombia? No, the the pictures of attendees. Because I can't seem to do it all of a sudden. I don't have my mouse. Okay. It's hard for people here to see the slideshow. So. But Eileen is absolutely correct. A million apologies. Columbia is spelled with an O after the L, not a U. Anyone here Colombian? So sorry. Okay, so this is about our artist for today, Maria Fernanda Cardoso. Cardoso. Good morning, Daniel. So these are some of Ms. Cardoso's sculpture. These are not made from natural material. These are actually ceramic pieces, but you can see that she was inspired by looking at natural form. These look like, to me, seed pods that she probably studied and looked at and handled. I don't know if she herself made these forms or worked with others who helped make them for her. One of her most famous art installations was a flea circus. It featured live cat fleas. Interestingly enough, she spent many, many, many years training 
the fleas to do what she needed them to do. I don't have pictures of the flea circus. Um, the flea circus included performers and stunt fleas. They lifted cotton ball weights and they had names. Teeny and Tiny were tightrope walkers. Pepita and Pepon, a flea couple, pushed luminescent balls on a wire and Brutus pulled a locomotive. Cardosa guided the behavior of the fleas by reward. When they behaved as she desired, she let them feed directly on her blood. As Cardosa explained, it's one of the hardest things in life to train fleas. It took six years and it requires a lot of patience. No one knew how to train fleas anymore. So she had to learn on her own. The first public performance of the Cardosa Flea Circus took place in October 1996 at the San Francisco, at San Francisco's Exploratorium. Because of the size of the fleas, she collaborated with Ross Rudesh Harley to add audio and video for a larger projection. It was recently acquired by the Tate Modern in London. So her work has gained huge recognition. She's shown in MoMA in New York City, the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. She's shown internationally in Europe, the Americas and Australia. And now, as I mentioned, she lives in Sydney. In 2000, the Museum of Modern Art commissioned her to create a major installation for their millennium show called Modern Starts. She installed 36,000 plastic lilies in a 125 foot long wall, which subsequently toured museums throughout the United States. In 2003, she represented Colombia at the Venice Biennale, exhibiting a large installation of starfish woven together into a submarine landscape called Woven Water. I think I have a picture of that. So let's move on in the slideshow. So this is a piece of hers, obviously made from seahorses. How do we feel about this? Yeah, they're seahorses. How do you react to the way it looks, first of all? What do you think? And you react. It. Stephanie, you love it, okay? Yeah. I didn't realize it was seahorses when I first saw it, but it's it's great. Okay, can you tell us why you love it? It, it just has so many designs in it that you could see the circles, and the the kind of kissing, it's just sweet. Okay. Daniel, you were trying to say something. Broke, broke out. Uh, a little bit broke out. You're a little grossed out. Why? Because uh, I think they a pile of pork. They are dead animals. SD. About this. It's kind of an abuse, Esty said. They were once alive, now they're no longer living. The Croatians used to be alive. Okay. All right. I, I have nothing in what I have about her that explains where she gets her materials from. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. 
Wait, sorry, I can only hear one person at a time. Laura, finish. Okay. It could be that she's trying to make us think about how endangered these animals are. Or consider what we're doing to the environment. And you also made reference to the fact that seahorses have interesting gender, certainly different from human uh, animals. Male seahorses carry babies and release the babies into the ocean. And Laura sees, you see the M shape that's created um, by the arrangement that she's made with the animals. He Heather, you wanted, you had your hand. Could be a W if you're looking at it from the other side. Audubon, killed, literally killed his subjects and stuffed them in order to paint. Of course, when Audubon did that, animals were way more abundant than they are today. <laughs> to me, to me, it's an interesting question for an artist who lives in Australia, where the Great Barrier Reef is certainly under huge threat to see an artist who's using marine animals for art. But I'm with you, Stephanie. I think it's beautiful. Um, Certainly think, beautiful. Are you seeing a movie, uh, are you seeing an exploitation movie called Animal Holocaust? No. Well, that's- I don't want to. Well, Sorry. well you, uh, you shouldn't if you have something they don't. But this movie actually has on screen animal killing. Okay. Like, like, this, like during, uh, hearing of a meerkat, this memory of a turtle, and months. Thank you for telling us about it, Daniel, so we know not to watch it. Okay, let's move along. I mean, I do want to talk just briefly about the texture, the gorgeousness of things we find in nature, because part of what we're going to well, a large part of what we're going to do for our project today is involved with the fact that nature is, in, I believe, most respects, the greatest artist of all. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's move on. This is the kind of thing that Ms. Cardosa is most famous for. She makes huge huge installation with forms from nature. She trained also as an architect as well as art. In the early 1980s, Cardoso studied architecture and the visual arts at the University of the Andes in Bogota. In 1990, she graduated with a Master of Fine Arts and Sculpture an installation at Yale University and then moved to Sydney, Australia in 1997. So you can see her interest in architecture as well as sculpture. Certainly there are many forms in nature that lend themselves to architecture. The way animals are built and formed is very architectural. And you can see where her fascination with plant and animal form would lend itself to this kind of work. These are starfish. I'm sorry? A what? Obscene? Uh, uh, he was uh, a serial killer that made, that made um, Okay, Dan, thank you. <laughs> okay. Now, I will say one thing. Starfish are one of the animals that are endangering the Great Barrier Reefs. The blue starfish, I think, 
is the one or the blue thorn starfish. Someone could re research that for us. As one of the animals that's eating away at the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, so maybe this piece is a statement on that. I don't know. But it is the type of installation. These become larger installations you're going to see in the slides that follow. Here you can see it's a larger piece, also using starfish. Love the shadows that this creates. It's pretty amazing. Now, I lived in Australia it's almost 50 years ago when I lived in Australia, and there were many species that were so endangered that you couldn't even pick them up off the beach. So that's something else to consider in her work. Here's a larger starfish piece, installation work. There must be hundreds, if not thousands of starfish that she's joined together to create this very lacy installation. Not sure where this is. She screwed and wired them together. Here's another starfish, starfish sculpture, wall sculpture. This is, I believe, this is either coral or starfish again, a wall installation of her work. That's, I don't know. I don't know where she gets her materials from. It, it could be that she collects them off the beach or has others help her collect them off the beach. I don't know. And I, this picture is kind of blurry. I'm assuming, I'm assuming this is living animals like the other pieces that we looked at. This could be plastic garbage, Estee. This could be made from plastic. She also makes sculpture from garbage. Yes. Yes, it could be dead coral. Yes. But certainly it's controversial work. Even dead coral can be put back in the sea to help create new reef because new coral could grow on top of it. It's hard to tell what this is made from. So this is a piece that I believe she colored and created something completely different in feel. It does not feel natural at all. And I'm not sure what it's made from, but I wanted you to get a sense of how different her work can be. And another very different. So this looks like it's incorporating feathers as well as other materials. She does like living, uh, like using materials from animals and other organic. It, they almost look like masks, the colored ones. Nails? Masks. Masks, yes. This one in particular, because yeah. it definitely has a face. That's the last one. All right. Any other thoughts or comments on Maria Fernanda 
Cardoso's work. Again, highly regarded artist, but here she solicited a lot of feelings, a lot of deep feelings. It's interesting. She also did a piece called Dancing Frogs. It's an assembly of dry, dead frogs connected by a circular wire. The frogs appear to be spinning in circles as if in a ritual dance. The piece explicitly references the representations and indigenous symbols of the muisica as the circle and the frogs were part of this pre-Hispanic symbolism. I don't have a picture of that. All right, today. Our work will be about natural form. Those of you at home, I'm gonna invite you to find any natural forms that you may have available to you. You may have some house plants, you may have a rock collection or a stone collection, you may have a shell collection. Those of you who are here, I brought in a variety of shells and rocks for you to use. It's a limited number of things, so please share. I also, in the email I sent out, I invited folks to bring in your own. Create a little small still life. And I invite you to either do a, a drawing or a watercolor today. I have brought in watercolor paper as well as drawing plate paper. And I leave it up to you to decide which direction you want to go in. Um, I'm suggesting that you focus on texture rather than color today. But depending on your mood, if you want to do a colorful piece, Ms. Cardoza's last two pieces that I showed you were incredibly colorful. If you're in the mood to go for color, do so. If you prefer doing more natural, colors, there are colored pencils as well as watercolors for you to use today. Any questions? You can go super realistic or you can do abstract today, whichever you're feeling comfortable with. Any questions? A theme? A picture on the screen. Uh, do you want me to put a picture up? Some people seem disturbed by images of her work. I'm asking everybody, people at home or people here, would you like a picture? It's kind of dead silent, show us. I couldn't find the picture of the... I couldn't find. Oh, Suman has a picture. You can see it on her phone. <laughs> and Esty, you may be happy to know, but the New York Times spelling bee today, Hora, was one of the words. So I'm glad you brought it up. What, Daniel? You all have considered putting like. Thank uh -huh. 
Guys, popping pictures is a great way to learn how to draw realistically, but the best way to learn to draw realistically is from real objects. It's the only way. If you want to learn how to draw realistically, you've got to look at the real deal. Your son? Yeah. You, you can do the actual flower, but you know, use the real thing. Yeah, or the tomato. I would combine the two. I would do what you do, what you see, do what you see. If, if you're really interested in competition. Here's, here's, here's a challenge for you. Light and draw pencil and you bring scissors to bed. Maybe with a wire desk tip in there. That was very sad. There was such a piece of paper. And we were kind of very humble. Otherwise, draw lightly in pencil. If you don't like the competition, draw right. That's I love that. I love them, but I also love stems and flowers. I will bring this And there's some beautiful native states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see the leaves. 
Frogs are also very endangered. Frogs are animals that breathe through their skin. So they don't have air pollution. Imagine how endangered frogs are. Folks at home, you, you found things to work with. Everyone good? And I'm sorry, frequently folks at home, you have to leave early and you leave me messages in the chat. And sometimes I miss those, I'm so sorry. But if you have to leave, life comes first. Don't worry about it. I understand. For me, there's no more relaxing activity than drawing from life. This is drawing from life. You get very absorbed in looking particularly at small complicated objects like this. Oh, Courtney, so one of her larger installations, you think it was fake flowers? Um, yeah, I found a close up and from the side on the flowers, on the, the coral, I, I found a close up with, with two perspectives on the coral um, and it looks like it's flowers, fake, fake yeah, flowers. She did do that large installation with fake lilies. So maybe that was that piece. It's interesting. I mean, I... She's 36,000 plastic lilies in a 125 foot long wall. So perhaps that was the piece that I showed. But she also did a large installation of starfish woven together, but that was an underwater landscape called woven water. <laughs> Those of you who find this an interesting question, I invite you to look into her more. Do more research. were doing objects that had very little color, my recommendation is to look at the shadow underneath and find the object to help you define. If the object is mainly white, I 
Yeah. Guys, I forgot to put out the most gradual items that I brought. I got to start. If you're not satisfied with what you got or you want to add something,
Not the intention of those. You well. Wait, wait. Folks at home, are we copacetic? Thanks, Courtney, for replying. Beautiful beginning to your joy. Yeah, I'm not that's negative. Oh, yeah. Very nice. This comes from Ghana. Yeah, it was in the bottom of the, the dish that I, <clears throat> excuse me, had all the shells in. So I kind of ended it up in the ball. I dumped the dish with all the shells. It's just iron. Yeah. There's a village that I visited in Ghana today. Great little iron sculpture. They they created huge. The <clears throat> village makes their living. You know, they take what we would call their garbage, what they call their materials, and they take it and they use it to create things to sell. Make I don't understand why I would buy the sheep that I would make the sheep of it. Yeah, but it's close. So God exploited it. You're so lucky. You I know, you did too. Because you're a lucky day, lady. Yeah. You must have dug deep into the bottom of the bottom. It was under the bottom.
don't hesitate to mix code. You remember what I talked to about the tolerance. Mix red with yellow. Blue with yellow. Blue with red. Violet with yellow. It's neutral gray. Red with green. With orange, so anytime you mix primary color, the color opposite, and the color wheel, you're always going to get brown. So blue with orange. Red plus green. We call this neutral. Sometimes it's a grayish color. Anytime you mix the primary color, primary, 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 with the secondary color opposite on the color, you mix the primary red with blue, you always mix. Red with yellow, you always get the secondary orange. Those two primaries, yellow and blue, you always get the green. Green with red, it's always green. Blue with orange, it's always green. Yellow with orange, it's always red. It's drying is not so good. It's really should be more.
find the right breath. Nice progress here, folks. Everyone at home still doing okay. So Laura did find information that Ms. Cardoza is an environmentalist and believes strongly about protecting the environment. So that's good. Here's another piece. Let me read about this cementario, which cementario slash vertical garden is a series of unique installation pieces made of artificial flowers placed as if growing horizontally from the wall over funerary stones outlined in pencil. 
not recommend any of it is based on our standards. What, Daniel? By the way, tonight, any of you who are friends of Liberty State Park, there is a meeting of the Department of Environmental Protection at the unveiling of the new plans for Liberty State Park. So I hope you will be there that future and the new park. Environmental protection is unveiling the renovation in the Liberty State Park. There are some good things you want to stop as a developer to make it. Millionaire developer who wants to build apartments, expand followers, etc. etc. John Lazarette, who had a first event. Yeah, environmental protection, the Army Corps of Engineers. Are the ones who are going to start. They, they want community input. They want to that
Oh, yes, they're very interesting. The people who were who showed up at the scene last night were Union City, New York, Irving residents who were very upset about Braddock Park. And it was happening then. Well, it's been happening for over 20 years. There are um, trailers there where they run their early childhood programs and they want them. They should not be in there. Those children should be in school. Trailers there. Trailers there. Trailers there. Trailers there. Trailers Stunned by those people, and then there were a few people there complaining that the room light was being spread. This part together with right now this feels separate. Yeah, we can't get back.
Well, right, so that's what I was going to say. Great minds think alike. So we still have about 30 minutes, everyone. Take your time. Oh, that's good news. Everyone at home doing good? It's that way. It's so overwhelming subtlety of the shape. So I would just use a lot more water and maybe something to get the towel. Yeah.
about this first of all being a bitch. Yeah. Oh, 
No questions from folks at home? Thank you. 
Come on, keep layering the colors. There's some very dark color in that photograph. Yeah, so well, keep layering. <laughs> Everyone at home content? Everyone's still with us, good. Remember folks at home, if you need advice, just give a yell.
Now, sharing is optional. Laura's going to come around with her camera. If you do not want to share, you don't have to. Just say to Laura, no, not ready to share. That's fine. We're going to do in house sharing first today because I feel like we did at home people first. And you don't have to share your name if you don't want to. So, Laura, just tell us when you're ready. Oh, Margo did have to leave. Okay.
Here we go. All right. Here is our first sharing tomorrow's. Oops, sorry, tomorrow. You know what we're going to do today? If you want your name to be shared, you can say it first. Because this is recorded. I, if you don't want your name to be shared, you don't have to share your name. Look at the gorgeous color. And she was looking at this iridescent shell that's very, very difficult to capture in watercolor, especially. And she did very well. Very gorgeous. nice. It is gorgeous. Wonderful. I think this is one of the best drawings you've done so far. You've been really, really focused today and working hard. Look at the detail. Gorgeous, beautiful. Really complex shell. Yeah, people are saying gorgeous because it is. <laughs> So he has been doing multiple drawings of the same shell. I think you've been really successful, but good. right. They're, they're really so, lovely. He is harder on himself than anyone else could ever be, but of I course. think they're wonderful drawings. They're, they're lovely. They're really lovely drawings. All right. Look at this fantastic color. The one suggestion I have is you might want to think about your background. Couldn't get to it. I didn't have time. You didn't finish yet. I know. <laughs> so, Eileen, I don't know what color to use for the background, but it does need some background work. It's really beautiful. You know, it's reminding me of Andy Warhol. Yeah. I'm not sure why, but yeah. It's Love flat. it. Yeah. Great shapes. Great color. All right, next. Oh, beautiful. Really great use of shading. And I love that you use the sepia charcoal, not the black. Well done. Great texture. Great form. They're beautiful. Yeah. 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 Turn it around, please. Oh. Fantastic. Yeah. You got a gasp. Yeah, look at the detail in this. Hmm. Wow. Wow. You got a wow. One of the best. One of the best. Bravo. Mm -hmm. Shirley, show it. Wow. Oh, wow. This one really looks so real. Oh, it's stunning. You've got a stunning show. Where did Sally, you're next. Yeah, go buy your artwork. Oh, you lost your turn, Sally. <laughs> These are beautiful. Well done. Beautiful color and texture. Lisa was doing rubbings. Hmm. Very well done. Oh. 
Look, talk about detail and realism. Wow. Yes, she did too. Oh, wow. That's fabulous. Colored pencil. They're, they were watercolor pencils? Yeah. Wonderful. Look at the detail, fabulous work. I don't know this lady's name. I don't know. Do you want to share your name? This is Suman, yes. Look how beautiful. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that shell and the tree branch. Beautiful. And the bird. You went all the way. Animals as well as dead shells. This is Rarantica. Look at this. Colors. Great colors. Colors, yeah. And Nicole. Hmm. Very great. Oh, oh it's lovely. Work in progress, definitely. Beautiful composition. And Sally. Oh. oh, that's really cool. The urchin. She keeps that's calling the water. And a starfish. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, folks at home. Courtney, you want to share? You're first in my... Uh, sure. I don't know if it'll show up very well. Um, I had a shark too. Mm. Wow. And um, a sort of puzzle, wooden puzzle thing. Mm. And then I tried to do the shark tooth with color. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. I'll talk about use of shading. Well done. Have you ever done any architectural drawings? Um, no, but I trained as an archaeologist and drew like hot shards and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So wow. you've done a lot of observational drawings. You can tell. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Great, Courtney. And Susan, you're next. Okay. So Oh, it just snuck out somehow. Wow. Oh, cool. Yeah, there's some rocks that I have. I collect rocks and fossils. And so that's what I had in the house. And I started drawing. The dark one on the bottom almost looks like two figures. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, it's this piece of, I don't even know the name. I should know the name of it, but I don't. I ordered it from a fossil company. <laughs> like lava. It's not lava. I can't remember now. I have to look it up and see what it is. I don't remember. I have all these um, rocks and stones in my house. I have no idea what anything is. So. <laughs> cool drawing. I, I would do a little more shading in the background. Just yeah. slight shading. Yeah. Okay. I will do. Yeah, it's not. Very nice. Okay. Thank you. Well done. All right, so uh, we have a few more minutes. Those of you here who have not finished cleaning up, please do so. Um, and next week is, I believe, is it our final celebration for, yes, for Hispanic Heritage Month. We will be wrapping up that celebration and we will be entering November when we will be celebrating Native American Heritage March. Really excited about both things. And I look forward to doing more art with you in future. Thank you to those who came in person. 
And thank you to those who came by a Zoom. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. My pleasure. Stephanie, are you still there? Did you want to share? No, Stephanie is not there. It must have been Courtney. You're welcome. See you soon. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. Thanks for coming. Oh, Laura, you're the dog.